How would you feel if you're on a fairly crowded elevator and someone right in front of you is the only person facing the other direction, the back of the elevator, and therefore they're standing face to face with you? I realize that's weird, but it's also proof that we do have some expectations for other people's behaviors. In breaking basic social rules, is the fast track to making others find a lot of reasons not to spend time with you. In this video, we will discuss 13 behaviors that can make other people dislike you, and it's hard to be confident if you don't even know what you're doing wrong. Please tell me in the comments below what you think of these and now. To the list, number one, you are way too loud way too often. For the love of cookies, people, please keep the volume to the same level as those around you. If something as simple as tapping a pencil can make other people dream of diving over a table to choke a person out, imagine what they are thinking of you when you're talking so loud the entire coffee shop is looking at you. Number two, being a bad conversationalist. Being overly nice will raise red flags, just like your 80-year-old neighbor does when they garden in a thong. Being way too touchy-feely with a stranger is as unwelcome as an unflushed toilet, and so is giving away too many intimate details before you even know someone's name. Be friendly and willing to share as a conversation progresses, but remember that telling a little less early on is always better than telling too much. Number three, being super negative. Have you ever known someone who complains like they're paid by the word? You know, you could give them $100 for no reason at all, and they'd still complain that you didn't give them $200. These people are as fun as having toothpicks jammed under your toenails, and they likely don't find themselves invited to many events. So stay positive and keep the venting for certain occasions and certain people. Number four, dominating conversations. If you treat every conversation like you're being interviewed on the red carpet, you might be a low-grade narcissist. One of the traits of very likable people is their willingness to show interest in other people. Dominators are the exact opposite and often are known as the type of person who, quote, sucks the air out of the room. Do better. Number five, expressing crass opinions, seventh grade humor, or any of the other things mentioned in this list on social media is no more appropriate than doing it face to face. So don't be a caveman just because you're behind a screen. Imagine someone asking your parents, Hey, how's Tyler doing? And the best answer your parents can give is, Oh, he's a great internet troll. He loves being rude to other people. What a waste of the only life you get. Number six, being condescending. No one likes being talked down to, especially when the person doing it has no reason to think they are on a higher level. Condescending people are as fun to be around as a manure pile, and if you have a friend like that, you should speak up and politely tell them why it bothers you. If they can't change, you should move on. There are billions of people on the planet. Why keep a disrespectful person in your orbit? Number seven, being super secretive. There is always give and take when getting to know others. And that process has some invisible boundaries that represent normal. If you ask questions, but get defensive or unusually protective about common questions asked of you, other people may wonder if you're the bad guy in the crime show they watched last night. Being mysterious can be cool, but being secretive makes you sketchier than weak old takeout food. Are you not sure what to share? Well, a 2013 study led by Susan Sprecher at Illinois State University 
suggested that simply sharing details about your hobbies and your favorite childhood memories can make you seem warmer and more likable. Number eight, bad hygiene. Nose hair protruding like a walrus tusk, breath that could serve as a weapon of mass destruction, and waiting to shower until after you met that person for coffee can all be forgiven on occasion. But if you roll through life like that every day, it's a turnoff. People may not dislike you, but I doubt they'll be texting to arrange get-togethers often either. Number nine, how friendly do you look? Now this isn't about being attractive, though that registers with others too, unfortunately. You have probably heard the term resting bitch face, meaning someone's default appearance is that of a person wearing underwear made out of sandpaper. And if that first impression is unfriendly, you can't expect people to be eager to say hello. Number 10, arrogance. This can show itself as someone who likes to name drop or humble brag. And most people prefer to chat with someone they find interesting things about from someone else, not a person that sits down and says, let me tell you how awesome I am by mentioning this person or that friend. Doing those things doesn't show confidence. It reveals a lack of it. Number 11, a chronic fear of, well, everything. Confidence is fleeting for many people, and anxiety is very common. But we know how things worked out for Chicken Little, right? So try not to project a constant state of unease or dread, or at least save it for a bestie you know is cool with it. Confidence is a great trait, so the opposite of that is understandably not very sought after. A Business Insider article told of a study in which results showed that participants rated people lower on every measure when those people smelled of stress-induced sweat. Why they were close enough to smell that, I'm not sure. But it's another great reason to use deodorant. Number 12, offering a feeble handshake. This comes across as submissive or lacking confidence. And though it may not make a person unlikable, it doesn't make a good impression either. Always look a person in the face and smile when greeting them, and a firm handshake will seal the deal. But trying to make them say uncle with a knuckle-busting grip isn't the goal either. Number 13, talking negatively about other people. Dishing on someone else to an acquaintance will only make that person realize you'll eventually talk about them too. They may still meet you for coffee, but they will probably keep you at arm's length and fail to disclose things to you due to a lack of trust. Good friends can share things like that, but even then it's better to be the person others like for their enduring positivity, not their prowess at stabbing someone in the back. And here's a bonus tip. Keep politics out of it. Society operated just fine in the pre-social media era by not discussing money, religion, or politics. You will get your say on election day. Until then, bring up the subject only with like-minded people and learn to see good in people without knowing how they feel about the hot button issue of the day. Please click on the video you see previewed on your screen right now. I hand chose it for you. And also like the video, subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. Thanks for watching.